on training an army of zombie ninja assassins. Enter the dojo. Welcome to the fucking show. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? Uh, my name is Sam Cornette. Sam's Cornette. This is the Enter the Dojo podcast. I'm hanging out with my homie Dan Nation. Say hello, Dan. It's Enter the Dojo. It's Enter the Dojo. It's Enter the Dojo. I just changed it to Enter the Dojo. <laughs> You're um, killing me. The Cinema, the Cinema Dojo podcast. So this is very, very exciting for us. It's a, It's a brand new thing that we're doing but this is not a new thing for us dan and i have done podcasts off and on for years we started way back in 2011 nobody go look for this you know what people are going to find it anyway i don't give a shit you're not canceling me I don't, i'm not apologizing for anything the sam and dan nation it was on uh, jackalope radio that was a very interesting show that we did for about a year year and a half uh, really enjoyed doing it it was more of a radio show than it was a podcast and then um then we did Nerdosphere. Remember that, Dan? Obviously. Yep, yep. Uh, Nerdosphere working for Phantom Fest, which is a local convention. We are located in the great state of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, if you're not familiar with Louisville, it's it's bourbon and people who ride big fucking horses around in a circle. Little people who ride big horses around in a circle and beat the shit out of them. And other people gamble on it. Um, that's about all we got going. That and what, what else? Biscuits and gravy? Maybe. Alcoholism. I uh, alcoholism, for sure. Speaking of which, I've got my, my wine. We can tell things have changed because when Dan and I used to do podcasts, we would drink malt liquor, wouldn't we? Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. And now, so we're, now we're drinking wine, like a couple of refined boys. Breaking out. Sit down to Mickey's hand drink. grenades. That's right. Mickey's hand grenades. Mickey's fucking hand grenades. That was the shit. I love those goddamn things. Um, little kings, <laughs> little kings. The the little the cream flavored beer situation. It was so and good. you know you always got to break out the. Uh, you can't find cold forty five. You got to get that magnum. That's right. So uh, if you're watching this, clearly you're watching this. You should be drinking too or doing something because we're going to have a lot of fun. If this is uh, the first time you've seen anything that that Dan and I have have put together, um, take your pants off. It's going to be a ride, baby. We're, 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 we're going to have a good time. Um, this is the Cinema Dojo podcast. Dan and I, if you're familiar with our work at all, we, we own a production company called Cinema Dojo, which is, um, a multimedia company. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> I mean, currently our biggest, uh, production is Meet the Carvers. If you have not watched Meet the Carvers, it is our show. It's a show that Dan and I did. We came up, oddly enough, with the idea back in 2008, I believe. So, uh, went into production during COVID, finally went into production during COVID. Well, and, we uh, we went back into production. We had done some, but we, we went into full production. We made a season. We didn't just make a fucking show. We didn't just make a fucking pilot. We made a season because we're committed and it's fantastic. It's, and I'm not just saying this because. I'm in it and I do voices and, you know, I'm the co-creator and, and a writer, but it really is probably the best cartoon that I've seen in a very long time. The problem is no one knows it exists. So we need you, lovely, beautiful, creepy motherfuckers, to watch the show and tell people how much you love it. Share it with your goddamn friends. It is, uh, it's kind of Adam's family, Monsters. Uh, everybody understands those references. It's a family dynamic. Uh, about a group of monsters who live in, in rural New Jersey and kill any shitty people. There's a commercial. Don't worry. We're going to plug our own shit over and over again aimlessly. 
Um, well, said, no, it's not like, aimlessly. We, we want you to watch the show. I mean, it's been, yeah, we want you to watch the show. Hopefully not aimlessly, but uh, it, it has seemed a little bit aimless. But now, you know, with, with this, with the podcast, hopefully we will um, we'll generate some more interest. So uh, Dan and I are just jabbering, but why the fuck should you care? Why should you why should you listen to us? This is our first podcast. Why do you give a fuck what Dan and I think? Um well we are cinemaphiles. We are first and foremost, Dan and I, our friendship developed over a deep, comfortable love of Joe Bob Briggs. Um and old shitty horror films. Like that's that's our thing. That's who we are. So we are fans, first and foremost. We are also creators of a of a product, of a TV show. You know, I, I think that, like our fan base, we're very opinionated. Horror fans tend to be very opinionated. We all have uh, ideas and things that we want to see, things that we, we would like to see more of. So we're going to be honest. We're, we're going we're gonna to do some reviews. We're going to do a lot of different things with this podcast. But I want to be clear that this isn't just a podcast. You're going to see all kinds of crazy shit when you watch this. Good reviews, because Dan and I... We love to eat, uh, and and we love to drink. So we're gonna do a lot of that. Um, you, you might see us uh, doing cooking videos because I'm a chef. So uh, we'll we'll layer some of those things in also. In addition, you might to... see Jack doing some. Uh, we have a uh, one of our main characters. You want to tell them about Jack? And so Jack is um, Jack is a wooden puppet. He's a ventriloquist dummy. You watch the show, and a lot of people have questions you know, about the characters. Jack seems to be everyone's favorite character, and that's understandable because Jack is a sociopath and a narcissist, and he's very much the comic relief. He's kind of like he's kind of like the Rick in this show. Terry Rick, of Rick yeah. and Morty. Damien, who you know is the son, plays the son. I also play Damien. Damien is uh, sort of the Morty character. Well, you know what? That's not a real fair comparison. Damien's cooler than fucking Morty. Don't yeah, get me wrong. Damien's definitely Morty. better than Morty. Damien's definitely cooler than Morty. But yes, um, Jack is, is just this asshole. He is basically a highly exaggerated version of my personality. So I enjoy writing him. Um, and I enjoy playing the character. Jack uh, is very opinionated, so we're going to have Jack do some... Movie reviews, we may have Jack to fucking food reviews. I, I, I don't know. We're going to do some different things. The nice thing is because we're a multimedia company, we can animate shit. So. We also would love to uh, maybe have Jack do some interviews with some of our celebrity guests. So we'll see <laughs> if we that, have that in the future. That's definitely going to be another thing. We're, we're for sure going to have guests. Obviously, this being the very first show. We don't have any guests, but we do know some people. We know a lot of people, and we're going to get them on this program uh, and get them talking about themselves and horror in general and, and what their likes are. And um, obviously, if you follow our work, you know that Felissa Rose, who I absolutely love and adore, my favorite actress, plays Dolores in the show. She is absolutely fucking amazing. Dave Sheridan, great, good friend of Dan and mine. Dave is, is arguably, in my opinion, Maybe the most undervalued person in fucking Hollywood. Dave can do anything. He's he's an amazing actor. He's an amazing voice actor. He's a musician. The guy's just he's got it all going on. And I hate to bring it up like what everyone knows him from because he he does so much more than this. But uh, if you've seen Scary Movie, well, Dan, tell him. Tell him about Dave. Oh, uh, well, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, he's he worked doofy, with the Wayans. He was Doofy in Scary Movie, and I, and I hate he's, to bring that he's up. worked with the Wayans a lot, actually. He's done a lot uh, of work for the, for the Wayans, yeah. Uh, and sure. it's all quality. Uh, of yeah, course, I mean, uh, he, if you, uh, old, old school people, if you uh, ever watched Buzzkill on MTV back yeah, in the like day. Yeah, like he basically started the thing. So Jackass was, in my opinion, very much patterned after the show Buzzkill. Buzzkill came before Jackass, and it was on MTV. And that was Dave's shit. Dave yeah, it was kind of like the breakout on that concept. For sure. Dave is an incredibly intelligent guy, and he's very, very talented. And we're very lucky to have him. He plays Larry, which is, um, I don't even know that <laughs> we can legally say it. It's, it's well, a, you it's could a call him my monster pal. My monster pal, yeah, that's fine. 
Yeah, he's he's a, a reimagining of a very popular 1980s toy that um, is possessed by a demonic rock and roll spirit that likes to do cocaine and and fucking eat strippers. By the way, if you're easily offended, I should just go ahead and put this on the table now. Just pull it out, Dan. Just slap that big old meat on the table. If you're easily offended, you probably want to shut this off because, you know, we're going to talk about things that are offensive, like butt fucking. Uh, and there's Waterloo. a segue. Have you ever tried this, Dan? This is amazing. This shit is fucking so good. Was it Napoleon's favorite? Ah, that's how look at you. So, uh, we're going to have guests. Uh, we're going to try to have a guest every time, but we, we won't always be able to have a guest. There will be different things going on. It's not going to be just two assholes talking. Uh, for instance, we went to, we go to cons. We went to Wonderfest um, a couple weeks ago. That was a fucking experience. Um, it was a trip for sure. Yeah, fear and loathing in Louisville. Daniel and I had a great idea to to, to eat some um, psychedelic mushrooms and go to a fan convention that's essentially for models. It's it's a model. It's like mo model toys. I don't mean model and like, props. Like, yeah, exactly. Mm. It's so an interesting. Like, uh, telling you, if you if you don't know, it's a very specific sect of nerd, right? And I don't mean that to be demeaning or be an asshole, but like, you know, you got to have a very specific nerd thing going on to sit in your living room in your underwear for fucking 56 hours and build a recreation of the Starship Enterprise. I don't have that. I am impressed that you do, but not my thing. I digress. There was other guests there, like our homie and a uh, guy that, that's in the program, does uh, multiple voices already. Frank Three Pete. voices in one episode. Can't say enough good shit about Frank. I love Frank. Frank is amazing. He's also incredibly, <laughs> incredibly talented in his own right, not just in this program, but the, the performance that he gave for us was just, it was unreal. Um, a lot of people are familiar with Frank from one of my favorite uh, 80s films, Black Roses, uh, which Frank... Frank's done a lot of other work, too. He's an, he's an amazing uh, artist. He, he draws. He worked for he, Disney. Yeah. Yeah, he works for he works for Disney. And I say that laughingly because there's some there's a little tiny bit of Disney humor in the last episode. But Frank's great. So we're gonna we're gonna have those people on for sure. And then we're gonna have some other people in horror and, and whatever. Cinema Dojo is is just it's about cinema, right? So we are horror focused. We 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 love horror, but um we're gonna fucking do everything, man. We're gonna talk about everything because because Dan and I are are multifaceted. And and not one dimensional, right? I mean, let's right hope there. not. <laughs> I'm not one dimensional. I'll take my pants off for you. <laughs> oh my goodness, the jokes are gonna get thick and hard before it's over with, ladies and gentlemen. Thick and hard. Uh, so, Dan, why don't you tell the nice folks what you do? Since we don't have a guest, I'm interviewing Dan. Why don't you tell uh, the nice folks what you do at Center Dojo? Well, I guess. Sam writes, we kind of yep. beat out, we kind of beat out stories together because oh, I enjoy oh, crafting oh. the plots as well. <laughs> You're going to be all right there. I'm good. So, uh, we beat out, the, get my mind right. We beat out the plots together. He goes and writes it. Then it comes to me and I start looking over it and I do the art. So I'm looking for what do I got to do now? <laughs> What has to be done immediately? How much of a pain in the ass is this going to be, et cetera? Uh, well, and then I, I bounce that off. You don't give yourself nearly enough credit, and I, I wanted to stop. You are, you're, you're an amazing artist. Like this, I can say this for sure. This would not exist without you. I mean, you uh, conceptually, with with all of the character creation and, and all of those things, um, yeah, I, I, I just, you're obviously not just co-creator, but irreplaceable creatively. Well, uh -huh. it's interesting that you say this because I literally didn't really draw anything for like 12 years, 15 years. I don't know why. It's like a, it was a hobby in high school and I just kind of put it down. Uh, but I had a reason to pick it back up. And uh, fortunately, we've done lots of other projects where we uh, learned video editing and audio editing Yep. Uh, and I mean, i pretty much everybody has a working knowledge anymore, but, uh, through that, that helped our skills as we delved into the world of animation. 
which is a strange world to delve into, man. Most people, <laughs> most people that do this kind of shit, they take a crack at what you know, making their own short film or or whatever. Animation is arguably, and fuck you, because I can say this because I've done it. Arguably, the hardest thing that we could have attempted. I mean, really. I mean, you can make a movie, you, you run a camera, or even fucking iPhones have very camera now, but. But to be able to animate a thought and an idea and make it cohesive and not look like shit, the, I mean, I'm still just flabbergasted. That's a good word. You so rarely get to use it in a sentence. Every time I watch the show, I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ, we actually created that. That's wild. Oh, uh, there's, there's bits in the last season where I probably spent nine hours on 30 seconds to a yeah. minute worth of material. I mean... It is what it is. You you know People don't you want to understand. Like when you watch a cartoon on television, everyone takes it for granted. Like you turn on fucking Scooby Doo, and you're like, "Oh, this is great." You have not a fucking clue what actually went into that. Like animation is no joke. It is a ton of work, and I and I don't do it. I'm not I'm not an animator. I can't draw fucking stick figures. Um, I write. I do voices. You know, I'm, I'm creative, but I, I don't, I don't have that art skill. So I'm very, I'm a little envious of that. That's, that's, that's amazing that you're capable of doing that. So, well, it's a good you, thing. I don't, I don't it's, a, yourself enough credit, man. it's a good thing somebody can do it or else we wouldn't be, yeah, we wouldn't have this show yet. We wouldn't have it either without great writing and, uh, wonderful voices. So. You know, give yourself a round of applause for that. Stop, you motherfucker. No, no, <laughs> do it again. Tell me tell me how good I am. My fucking, my fucking ego needs it. Yeah, um, right? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, obviously, I write, and uh, and I do Jack, and I do Damien, I do Victor, I do I do Lucius, the cat. Uh, I play I a, do lot Eve. Different, play a lot of different parts. Yeah, you, oddly I, enough, you play as... I, I'm, the, I'm the little demonic girl uh, little thus demonic far. little demonic child. Yeah, so I mean, it, it really is. It's 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 pretty much a two man show, with the exception of Paul Coffey, who is um, we we call him creative director. He really helps with uh, production. Paul hel- Paul helps me to uh, manage the workload in a capacity of uh, helping me plan shots and uh, just you know giving something to bounce off of. Right uh creatively let's uh yes and to this yeah that's good but let's also see if we can do this etc cetera, etc cetera. we we be- we feed off of each other really well in a creative capacity for uh driving the visual quality of the show no I, and pa- paul is indispensable as well so i'd love to have him on he's not on tonight but we'll definitely have paul on the show paul's a funny motherfucker he knows how to have a good conversation he's very very intelligent and it sucks he can't be here tonight, but I digress. Yeah, Looks great like, in a pink tie. Josh, the homie Josh Drake. Josh does some music for us. Josh is very talented musically. Nicole Davis, can't forget Nicole. Nicole's amazing. She's done some she, She's and, helped us do a lot of fill-in art. And all, I mean, just in general, help Cinema Dojo. Nicole is the administrative director. of. Uh, <laughs> she, she, she makes sure that we keep our lights on and she has, <laughs> so that's i mean that's cinema dojo man that's the we're we're a very very small company we're a three four five man team i mean normally when people do animation there's 20 30 40 fucking people working on a show not not two dudes and that's what it was to begin with for the longest time it was literally just me and dan uh writing doing the voices and dan doing all the animation and that's still pretty pretty much what it is now i mean we have other people that that help and do specific things but the fucking two-man show it's it's crazy and i, I it sounds like i'm i'm filleting us a lot and and i am we'll give it that dark dark we deserve it god damn it that's pretty fucking cool you that, know, and that hawk to that hawk to uh you want to date the episode hawk to uh hey what that's fucking white material right there you, you and I have accomplished something amazing, and I, I think that it's important as a human being when you do something that's worth a fuck that you acknowledge it. So, uh, um, and I know you don't give yourself enough credit. You should. That being said, before we get on with tonight's festivities, uh, we already we already got some sponsorships. We already got we already got people that were taking money from most people. They, they don't do the sponsorship thing till like down the road. You know, people. 
not us. We were like, Jesus Christ, we got a potential audience of 1.5 million. Let's let's make some fucking money. Let's see if we can find somebody dumb enough to give us cash. So I got to get this out of the way. Uh, it's, it's small tonight. Uh, there will be more commercials. We're going to make actual commercials and and play them during the show. But tonight I'm, I'm going to do some reads here real quick. And next time, uh, obviously, Dan and I will. We're going to bury it up a little bit. We want to promote people that we like, brands that we like. Uh, especially local people. You know what's funny? I didn't realize. Son of a dojo. I'm sitting here. I've got real fucking ninja stars. How cool is that? The fucking heavy. You got on a caribou with this. You got three of them. Just in case somebody breaks into the studio. From the top. Does your cock not work right? You often find yourself standing limply behind a big set of bouncing beautiful butt cheeks. I love the chimes, by the way but just can't rise to the occasion Lord knows I have and many other penis-having persons found themselves in similar sets of unfortunate circumstances. Listen, not having girthy, vein-popping erections doesn't necessarily make you less of a man, but it doesn't boost your self-confidence either. Don't let Limp Dick take you out of the cheek-smashing game another day. Go to BlueChew.com and sign up now. It only takes one hand if your other hand is busy massaging your cowardly, non-working penis. The simple process is facilitated by real doctors who know their shit and will get your hog smashing through those meat curtains again in no time flat. Use the promo code Sausage Party for 10% off your first order. Once again, that's Sausage Party for 10% off your first order of these miracle-working dick pills. BlueChew.com. It's only a problem. If you don't do something about it, you cowardly cock of a man. I feel like there should have been a lickety split in there. I mean, we could, this is all, you know, <laughs> we, we can alter these things. Um, so I got a beard. He's got a beard. I'd argue that probably half of our goddamn audience probably has a beard of some type. I, I know a lot of horror fans. I have a lot of friends that are horror fans and they tend to be facial hair people. Uh, some of them tend to, tend to be the neckbeard, basement-dwelling type people, which is fine. I love neckbearded people, and I love people who live in basements. I've lived in several basements. There's nothing worse, though, especially in these hot summer months, than a dry, itchy beard. Most people with hair on their face, I'm sorry, on their head, they take care of it with shampoo and conditioner and all those things. But what do we do about our facial hair? Do we really take care of our facial hair the way that we should? I mean, I, I know that I wasn't. And you know what I'm talking about. These people that are sitting here right now with like Cheeto dust and dried pussy flakes, you know, caking up your mustache. You got to take care of your shit, folks. What if you could smell like a goddamn Viking warlord who just captured an entire village full of eager virgins? Mm. Your ass to Mad Mandy Beard Company, excuse me, Mad Mandy Beard Co., dot com and order yourself a big fat bottle of her delicious custom made beard oil. I use it. It's amazing. It keeps my beard nice and soft. It goes on smooth and will make your facial hair feel thick and luxurious. Thick and luxurious. I had to really lean into those two. Because I I capitalized and put them in bold. Uh not to mention lathering your face in an amazing sex inducing fragrance that will captivate and hypnotize everyone around you. If you don't have a beard, that's right. Don't fret. Mandy's got you covered with a complete line of amazing personal care products designed to boost confidence and take your personal grooming game to the next level. MadMandyBeardCo.com. Uh, I know Mandy personally. She's this cool, hot, blonde, fucking Viking chick. She makes all of her products uh, herself. She's local to the great state of Kentucky and Louisville. Uh, and I'm proud to say that she has completely changed my beard game forever at mandybeardco.com. Go over there, order yourself some beard oil. All right, so that takes care of that. And what let's you got? get into let's get into some movie news, baby. What do you got? <laughs> All right. Well, uh, recently we had trailers. Well, no, I'm sorry. We had a trailer for Smile Two. It's kind of more of a teaser. But uh, you've seen Smile. We watched Smile oh, together. Yeah. No, I, I watched it. Smile's a good uh, I mean, Go on. We'll talk it's about the it. sort of movie. It's the sort of movie like I'm down for a sequel just because you it know, was the an, first it was one. It was an interesting concept. It really was. I mean, I, I 
we watch a lot of new horror flicks and a lot of them are not very original at the very least smile to me felt a little more original i mean it's kind of like you know the ring or something like that but it's got its own unique yeah, spin on those that's, aspects that's a fair comparison for sure so uh i mean i'm i'm easily in on this one i imagine you are as well yeah for sure uh, going back to uh one of uh brandy's favorites uh it follows has a sequel coming out called they follow and so if uh you haven't watched it follows uh think about it as in basically it's like this entity that follows people that have slept yeah, with someone very cre- it's a very creepy yeah, uh, uh, unsettling film truly we, we had discussed how would you defeat the thing like you know it's the idea is you sleep with somebody else so you pass the curse on but yeah. then if they die it comes back on you so i figure you just get a bunch of people together for an orgy because like just pass it all around. Like, you know, if you got like 30 it, people, literally. if you got like 30 people and they're all getting down, I mean, yeah, it's kind of a crapshoot. Cause like, you don't know who slept with who you don't know in what order, uh, yeah. unless you got cameras, you better get consent for those. I mean, nowadays, yeah, you got to sign an NDA. By the way, if you're watching this, you got alcohol, drink, drink, you fucking drink, drink that shit. Sorry, go on. So that I always thought it was funny. Like it's one of those concepts. Like it's like so if you fly to Europe, right? Does it follow you there? I guess it would have no, to. It definitely does. Does, yeah. does it then just walk along the bottom of the ocean till it gets to you? That, you know, like, what, I imagine what I it would take a yeah. while. Yeah, that's what I imagined for sure. I imagine that would take a while though, unless they walk like Jesus on water. You know, I highly doubt that though. If I could walk on water. Sorry, I fucking I love yeah. Eddie Money. I love him so much. Brother Eddie. Brother Eddie. So yeah, uh, I assume they follow means that there's going to be more than one ghosty, whatever, demon Let's asshole. Let's go back to the orgy idea for a second. <laughs> I, 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 I don't <laughs> okay. think we gave that enough love. As, so you're passing it from one person to the next. How confused does the thing get, right? Like, like. It's got to be like, huh, 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 this dick, that dick. Look at those big cheeks. Jesus fucking Christ, who do I murder? <laughs> I, I mean, I would, I would like to think that they have like almost like uh, AI capacity in knowing the exact order of what's happened. Uh, even so, so. Like Bob fucked Carol and Carol fucked Terry Steve. and Terry fucked Debbie. And then Debbie fucked Steve and then Steve fucked Bob. Well, and so then, it went so all we, the way back around. We also haven't really said, I mean, uh, this might be controversial, but how does it count a sexual experience? Like, does it have to be penetration? Or is does it have to be oral? Does it have to be anal? Is is oral good enough? Well, we know in the film that it's erectness to vagina, but. What I don't recall about the old in the first <laughs> movie. <laughs> I mean, will that do I it? Will that get it? Will I, I, get it done? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, so, I, I wonder yeah. if the writers thought this through. If they were sitting around and they were like, I wonder. I feel like there's had to be discussion. How does butt fucking play into it? You know? Like, how does that, how does that shoehorn into the project on the back end? Did I did there? Well, and, uh, and then on top of that, you have the lesbian experience, right? Like, which I'm a big fan. What? I'm not gonna lie. I love the idea of two chicken fucking mashing tacos. I'm That's sorry. Fair. I'm not sorry. That's fair. I love gay people. Have a sword fight. There's nothing that you know. I just like people doing what they like to do, man. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> cross swords, cross the streams, mash tacos together. It's a beautiful thing. So, all right, I got off on a tangent there. Continue, sir. Okay, so going into some horror adjacent news here. Uh, adjacent. <laughs> says Marvel's Blade was almost 1920s set. Really? It's a very weird take. Uh, so, uh, Ali, uh, I watched him in. Uh, uh, 1920s? Tr- <laughs> I, I watched Herschel in True Detective Season 3. The, yeah, the, that was the one uh, with him and uh, 
our homie from like, Gate so, 2. So, I mean, where my brain immediately goes there, I mean, Wesley Snipes, right? 1920s, things were a little different back then, right? I mean, what, yeah. what, well, what, what what's, type of social problems does Blade experience in that environment? Now, I guess it's good. weird to it's me strange. that you would go prior to, like, horror cinema even starting, you know, with the Universal Monsters. Like, it's uh, just I a would, weird, weird I would take. Think, like, I would think like 60s, 70s, like the Shaft well, era. Here's what's funny. They wanted Mia Goth, who you know from Pearl and X and yeah, uh, yeah. the upcoming Maxine. Uh, they were going to have her play a vampire villain named Lilith, who wanted the blood of Blade's daughter. I mean, I don't know. It's like, it sounds like they were really, they've they've been all over the place with this thing. It'd be interesting to see once it comes out a retrospective of the the development of the development hell, so to speak. I mean, Mahershala has been attached to it for like 10 years and there had been, people had discussed anyway, the possibility of snipes coming back. I just realized you've got, you've got, sorry, not to interrupt you, but you've got the the fucking awesome uh, Felissa poster behind you. I love that. I I literally put it up right before the show. (laughs) She has Uh, got a great dick. She really does. (laughs) I was looking and I was like, I don't like the picture Love that's there. Her cock. Love it. Um, or is it like this? How, how do the kids do it now? Is it I, I can't make it. Is it like that? It's gotta be <laughs> yeah. it's gotta be big enough that you can stuff the sausage and the bolster. Okay. Sure. Sorry. Okay, so, so I got another so we watched Megan, right? Megan yeah. is the well, maybe, oh, uh, This is I, I a good it. time too. Maybe we should segue before you get into that. Uh, the rating system for films. So we, we we had a discussion about this. And when we rate films, I mean, Dan and I look for very, I don't want to say specific criteria, but there's things that I like, there's things that he likes. Usually, though, we kind of end up on mostly the same page with shit. So um, we were thinking, you know, everybody does stars. That's, that's boring. We could do ninja stars, but, you know, still, that's kind of, kind of like, what would be, what would be something that would that would captivate people that would just reach out and grab you by the nuts? Severed dicks. But that's yes, big fat severed cocks. That's what we want to do because well, the poster. Also, I, I think severed dicks are funny because I, I'm a sociopath, and I also uh, love in the cartoon. If you watch the cartoon, you would understand. There's a thing in the cartoon about a dick that's severed. Severed dicks. So we're gonna go. We're gonna go five severed dicks or four. Uh, I don't know. Five. <laughs> See, five. Choice. Let's do five. But let's do five dicks. Five severed dicks. So between one and five dicks, one being a very small severed penis, five being you know five severed dicks. It's a pile of dicks, and it's a whole bunch of dick. It All right, does continue. sound like quite a bit of dick. I'm vaping a lot, and I'm sorry, but when I'm when I'm drinking, I gotta do something. I used to smoke cigarettes. I don't smoke cigarettes. I'm gonna do something. All right, go. I mean, tell me the next thing you were talking about. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, with Megan. Uh, oh baking. yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't a big fan. One and a half, seven dicks. I'm gonna say three. Uh, liked it. Really? I think you, you you're a little harsh sometimes on movies. Uh, <laughs> uh, look, it wasn't phenomenal. Uh, but I'm I'm curious to see part two. You know, I'm curious to see what they do with it. I mean, I'll uh, watch I, it just because, like I said, I'm a horror fan. Uh, I, I watch do a find lot of it kind of I'm not even interested in. I definitely find it disturbing that NECA is making life size Megan dolls. Really? Somebody's gonna yeah, fuck yeah. those. Somebody's gonna fuck I mean, on the result. You gotta imagine nah. somebody's gonna think about somebody's it. Somebody's gonna hollow out her asshole and stuff a flashlight in there. I'm sorry, but this is the world we live in. People are fucked up, man. People are fucked up. So, uh, going off of that, apparently, Megan is getting a spinoff. You know, Megan is spelled M3GAN. Well, it's getting an erotic thriller with robots spinoff titled Soul Mate with an eight where the A is. You say erotic? Uh, Erotic. That's what it's erotic thriller, it says. Okay. Uh, Jordan That's James Wan and Ingrid B.C. crafted the story, which reportedly aims to harken back to those lurid domestic thrillers of the late 1980s slash early 90s, albeit with a modern technological All twist. All right, yeah, I gotta watch that. 
I got one. Uh, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta see how fucked up that is. In the film, a man acquires an AI android to cope with the loss of his recently deceased wife. In an attempt to create a truly sentient partner, he inadvertently turns a harmless love bot into a deadly soulmate. Into a deadly fuck machine. <laughs> so here's what's kind of she's gonna take it. Here's what's kind of disturbing me. about that. There's a lot of guys right now who apparently have AI girlfriends. You've heard about this? Jesus. Fucking Christ nailed to a cross. Yeah, I know. I'm aware. aware. How much yeah. do you know about it? Teach me. I, I don't know the full logistics. So, I mean, obviously AI is capable of doing just about anything. So, like, you, you sign up for, I, I guess my understanding is there's, like, services or certain services that you can talk with this thing. You can text with it. It will sex you. Sext, S-E-X-T. Text you. You know, like pictures of buttholes and shit while you're at work or, or whatever, cock real dirty to you. Like, here's my thing. As as a man, like I, I, I just I, I don't know. I, I prefer humans. I mean <laughs> like I'm, look, jerking off is already depressing enough, right? Like Fuck free will, I don't wanna deal with that. You know, at forty years of age, when I'm laying on my bed with my gut hanging out and I'm, you know, mashing my fucking meat sword, staring at my phone, I'm already like depressed enough, right? And, and that's just looking at porn. So I, I can't imagine like the the level of like self fucking loathing that would go into to knowing that the person or I'm sorry, the thing see, that's talking to you isn't even real. It's a computer, right? Like that's I, I think, though, uh, I think you're missing, there's some definitely some forever alone people out there, and, uh, hey, you know, hey. I, I, there's a, look, it, I fully <laughs> encourage sex work. I, I am, I am a big believer in, you know, I think that's perfectly all right. It's a victimless crime. If you're a fucking hideous child of a human, okay, and we know a couple, I know, we know a couple, personally, I'm not going to draw names, but we know a few. If you're a fucking huge chud of a person, especially as a man or as a guy who identifies as a man, you got a job, I'm sure, or a disability check at the very least. <laughs> get online and find you someone to, to, to swallow your penis or whatever you have. Get online, find someone to mash nether parts together with. Fuck it. Pay for it. Don't, don't, I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to jerk off and talk to a computer? I guess weird. I, th I weird. think that's that they... weirder to me than paying for a prostitute. Like, just, it, just, you, I think the thing, the chat. thing you're missing about it, and I'm not condoning it. Pay, pay for butt stuff. <laughs> I'm not condoning it myself. I, I mean, whatever. Uh, it's probably very it's unhealthy weird. mentally. It's, well, it's got to be, right? Like, that's got to like what what is I that think... doing to you psychologically? Because then you you're developing this fixation, right, on this thing that's not real. Like what well, that... what, what if you know what if Megan, I mean your your girl your your AI girlfriend is sending you pity photos while you're at work. What what if she starts sending them to Bob? You know, or do you get jealous then? I don't think that that works that way. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe she wants to see other talks, and she starts messaging everyone on your friends list. She has access to your phone because <laughs> you gave it to her when you signed the terms of service. You stupid fuck! You didn't read it, so now she's messaging all your friends. She's sending them butthole pics. What are you gonna do now? Well, here's Next another. You know, you're, you're crying on the edge of the bed with a with an unregistered firearm in your mouth, and it's your fault because you dated a computer. You dumbass. Here's another facet of it. What about how many guys? That's a great line, by the way. I said 2018. My understanding is that you can uh, feed into the system. Uh, oh, what you like? Well, not only what you like, but I think it's bad enough that guys could put their ex girlfriend into it. Oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> right. Like, that's, a, that's a whole other level of like weird stalkery <laughs> shit. Right. That's just pretty dark, man. Like, we really? <laughs> so you're going to take your, uh, presumably photos of your ex that she probably doesn't even know exists, or, or he, whoever your ex is. And, and I'm sure they want those photos being fed into a fucking AI internet thing that's just going to obviously hold on to those forever and then probably send those pictures to other people who are just as fucking deranged as you, I would imagine. Yeah. And, and, but again, like, so what does that do mentally? Like, that's not really your ex. Your ex well, doesn't here's... love you. She left you. 
because you're a piece of shit, presumably, or I don't know, maybe maybe she fucked the mailman, or, or you came home and caught her in the middle of a fucking gangbang situation, which I also condone. I don't care, but it's still not healthy for you as a person to sit around and and obsess about that and pretend that a computer is a human who doesn't want anything to do with you anymore. That's crazy. Next thing you know, you got people wrapped in plastic in your fucking trunk. Well, here's something interesting about that. Uh, apparently, Anthony Michael Hall recently said that he would uh, be supportive of the idea of a weird science remake, which I saw somebody say they could never do weird science today. But this is weird science. Like I've met, I've met literally... Anthony Michael Hall. He's a fucking great dude. Probably one of the best dressed humans I've ever met. I've stepped that. Oh, that motherfucker knows how to. No, play I, I know how he dresses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you got a shit together, bro. But uh, the I think it's a perfect time to do a weird science remake because this is basically the deal. I mean, you feed you feed the fucking elements of the girl into the system and it creates it for you. The the only step that's missing is the literal va- the vessel the what do you want to call it the avatar for the do, uh, do, robot. Do, 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 does like chicks with dicks too. I mean, I can imagine it has to, right? That's hot. What's the name of the website? For educational purposes, what's the name of this? What is it? I have no idea. Uh, okay, or or or, or whatever. Uh, I can't find it. I was trying to search it. So it'll literally give you anything you want. I mean, you know what? I, people, whatever makes you happy. You know, I really don't give a shit. I, I guess that, that it's a little weird. It's a little weird for me. Um, I prefer the idea of of interacting with another human. That's that's what gives me an erection, but I don't know. Maybe I'm old fashioned. I am old fashioned. I'm an old liberal. I'm a late 2000s. I'm sorry, late 90s, early 2000s liberal. The world's very strange now, Dan. But that's okay. I mean, it's, it's fuck it, something. Mix, fuck it. Mix it up, man. All right. So, what else? What else you got? You could move on from movie news. Well, I, I'll tell you what. I, I had. I did have a couple of films that I wanted to talk about. I, I want to see movies that I haven't seen. And if you have seen them, uh, drop in the comments and tell us what you thought. I haven't seen The Stranger's Chapter. Is that even out yet? Stranger's Chapter 1? Is that out? Yeah, it just came out on uh, video, I believe. So I really dug. I really liked The Strangers. The, the idea of it, I thought it was. I thought it was incredibly fucking dark, which it is. And very interesting. The first, the first film, the the others were okay, but they weren't as good as the first. This is my understanding. It's a reboot, essentially, right? It's a it's a prequel. So the way, no, it's not a. So my understanding is that the I'm pretty sure it was. I'm pretty sure it was Rennie Harlan. He liked the first one a lot. Rennie Harlan. He's, like, yeah, he's, the, he's, the, dire- he's the director well, of this one. It's written by Alan Cohen, Alan Friedland. Brand, so you know, I don't know who my is. understanding of what's going on here is that they're doing it's a full on reboot, and the first movie is essentially like a reboot of the first film, uh, with the idea that the three films would link together as a trilogy. Oh, uh, I got gotcha. uh, What I have heard as a uh, complaint is that. In that capacity, it does not surpass the first film by any means. So people are kind of down on it, just like, why did we need a reboot of the first one? So oh, but I, I think know, it's one I, of those I, deals. I understand. I understand that. It, I if know, the concept is that the three movies are supposed to be linked, I think you really got to wait until you see them all before you can really fully. I mean, yes, you should judge a film on its own merit. But, you know, if there's a concept, sometimes it helps to have the uh, rest of the flicks. I agree. No, I, I fully agree. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm definitely going to watch it. I, 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 get, I get other people's gripes with it, but I'm going to watch it and I'm going to see, see what I think about it. Anyway, um, I, I think you should always do that. If it's something that you're interested in from a film perspective, don't don't listen to what other people say, right? Check it out yourself. Well, maybe, and maybe, there's maybe people, it is a piece of shit. Maybe it is a bad idea. I'll tell there's you what, people what whose bad opinions... Idea. Was that was that there's, new Exorcist movie? Jesus, fucking <laughs> Mary and Joseph. I uh, I don't even remember what. I, like we watched part of it. I didn't that pay that much attention. Fucking dumpster fire of a film. 
Everyone involved with that should be barred from ever using a laptop ever again. Well, I mean, then we wouldn't get any more gemstones. So I need more righteous gemstones. I fucking love that show so much. I I love anything Danny McBride's in. Danny McBride's amazing. Have you seen Vice Principals? No, I haven't watched any of it. With Scott, with Walton? I'm I'm aware of it. I just haven't watched any of it. It's so fucking great. Yeah, I, I, How I, many I seasons it. did they do of that? Three? Uh, two, two, two. Three? Two. I believe it's two. I think it was only designed to be two seasons, though. That was it. Does it have, a like, a finality to it? Yeah, it's almost like a movie, and that's the way it was written. Um, they talked about doing another season, and I, and I wish they would, but I would fucking watch Walton Goggins. And if you don't know who that is, he was in Justified, which is another fantastic television show. He was which also in... Do you remember him in Sons of Anarchy? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. He played a uh, he played a, a trans person in that, and he was great. He was fucking great. He he fucking crushes he pulled everything. Pulled the fuck off, man. He looked um, looked apart, and uh, that's actually one of my that the the relationship between him and um, what was the guy's name? Tig Tigs. Yeah, that that was like one of my favorite parts of the show. It was it was, it was sweet, weirdly romantic. Walton's an incredible actor, so I, I would I would watch him in anything. As we say, they could cast him as the shark in Jaws, and I would fucking I would watch him. In Mostly that. weirdly romantic because Tiggs was fucking psycho. Tiggs was <laughs> fucking psycho. Yeah, that that's another show I wish that they would do something with again. Uh, I liked Maya and the Benjamin doesn't have the same thing. It's not it's not Sam Crow. It's not that not the same thing. All right, yeah, I guess I guess we can move on from from movie news. <laughs> Let's uh, let's talk about Wonderfest, man. Jesus Christ! I mean, we mentioned it, but so and we got some footage that we're setting up here. But Dan and I, we went to this convention. It was a lot of fun. We really, really, we went there to see to see Frank. Uh, so here's here's the thing. We live in Louisville, you know, home of Hunter S. Thompson, and so we got this the bright home. idea that. Uh, that a little psilocybin might be interesting at a uh, at a, a you yeah, know we, I mean uh, we've done miniatures we have we have done it before never we we've just, never done it at this particular type of show no, though we we didn't uh, I I can say for certain now in retrospect that um, it was not the right environment yeah it was kind of a poor decision it was a very uh, poor decision yeah it was a, it was a poor decision but it was still fun it was still a good time it was just. It was a little off the rails. We had a bunch of footage. Some of it was just way too fucking crazy to put on here. But we're gonna we're gonna show that to you. And um, you know, I, I encourage everyone, if especially if you're a horror fan, if you haven't been to a fan convention, go to one. Uh, they're all over the country, and a lot of them, you know, the, you see celebrities that you know and love from all these movies. It's worth it. It's worth the drive if you're in an area where maybe it's two or three hours away from you. Rent a motel room and go go for the night. You know, take somebody with you and just have a good time. Uh, we and we honestly, I think it's cool to go to. I mean, yeah, we said that Wonderfest isn't you know particularly our uh, our specific uh, area, but it's cool to go to different kinds of shows. You know, you meet some different people, you see some different things. So, I mean, you know, any of those shows are kind of kind of interesting. I I, I firmly agree that people should go check it check out things especially like this because this is not something that you and i are particularly interested in like i'm not a model guy you're not a model guy but um it was a good time there were some some major guests there uh from uh, obviously frank who was our friend but uh also who else was there <laughs> well daniel roebuck was there yeah uh daniel if you watch this sorry we were a little out of our head when we talked <laughs> you no, know, he was a great dude, and uh, honestly, we, we we would like to have him on the show um, if he would if he would do a voice. But yeah, Daniel Daniel was very cool. Um, there was a bunch of other celebrities there that we didn't Greg really. Nicotero get to, was Greg was there. Nicotero was there, which who we saw, but we didn't really get to, to interact with much. So it was it was rounded. It was a well rounded event, but it just um, 
it, it, it is sort of niche for for a specific area. Of I mean, it's very fandom. old school. The reason uh, it bleeds into horror so much is, you know, because of old, uh, you know, uh, old kits, horror model kits and stuff. So there's a lot of freak, blank there... piece of shit. I know you got something. Go find it. You got a beer somewhere. You got a bottle that you're hiding from your wife or your husband. They don't know about it because you're not supposed to be drinking. You haven't been to your recovery meetings. Go get it. Just a little, just a nip. It's not going to hurt anything. Dan, sorry, where's that? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's, the, it's the weed talking, man. Wonderfest 2024. Good time. We got some footage that we're going to roll for you right now. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Cinema Dojo Podcast. We are here at Wonderfest. I got my homie Dan Nations with me. We're going to go in here and have a great time. Welcome to the show. Dojo Podcast, walking around Wonderfest here in Louisville, Kentucky. We just got here. We're actually looking for the bathroom because I have to take a piss. I've already had too much to drink. Alcohol. Dan, say hi. I'm good. Here we are. Look at this shit. We got Dracula. It's Damien's long lost father. We're drinking on the con floor because we're. I mean, we do shit like that. Being the con experience. Our tight aisles. Look at all this shit. There's a lot of things going on here. Say hello, Dan. Hello, Dan. I'm running into people. In the active shooter booth. Fuck that. Ah, whatever. Maybe it's still usable. Always need a good vantage point to get the base of a con. Thanks. Oh, look at this guy. This is my favorite part of cons. It's crazy shit like this. Look at R2-D2. Is there anybody in there? Is there somebody that wants to get out? Hello? Hello? No? I'll just point something out. Get it for the gram, Mr. Groot. Disclosure, our eyes look like fucking piss holes in the snow. We ate a lot of mushrooms before we, yeah. before we came to this bucket. We're still eating mushrooms. Don't tell anybody. Look at you two. This is amazing. Can I get some Ewok noises? So amazing. I love it. So where where do these costumes come from? Did you make them? That's amazing. Safe. We're safe. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. We're in the bathroom. Don't burn me now. Lord of mercy. Is this a podcast? It seems like a podcast. It could be a podcast. In this way, now the camera, you see it's widescreen. I got a wide for you. You finish it. That's a boy. There That's wasn't much game. left. It was just like backwash. It's fucking good as it gets. Uh, it's, it's just very... Shit is dark. We're doing okay. No, we're not. <coughs> We've had... All right, look, so look, here's the deal. We've had a lot of drugs. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty great. So what What are you doing here, man? Hmm? I said, what are you doing here? What do you mean, what am I doing here? Well, I just I'm mean like, are you, yeah, you're like <laughs> I mean, it's a nice model show, but I mean like, are, do you make models yourself? Uh, I'm working on it. I've got... Um, I have, I'm working on building my shop right now, so I just keep my own, buying model kits and stocking them away. Yeah, gotcha. But I want to get back into it. So, yeah. I mean, the sand crawler. Yeah, that's pretty no, cool. That's awesome. That's very cool. I don't know. If this is a con or are we conning ourselves? I'm only asking because now I have waterproof shit because we had to go get a robot under these conditions. Dang a robot! Yeah. Don't have waterproof shit! Alright. Daniel! Robot! No shit! All right, we're back. So as you can see, that was uh, a little crazy. Things got a little out of hand, but we had a good time. Dan and I love to have a good time. So we do. We we we're, we are gadabouts. 
That's another word you don't get to use in the sense of very nothing. Look it up. What's a gad about you? Uh, I forget the specific uh, definition, but it's essentially we a are pleasure, pleasure seeker. seeker. We are pleasure seeker. That's correct. Whether it's good conversation or food or uh, certain illicit substances, movies. We, we, we love a good time, man. That's what we're all about. So um, we're going to do some more on the road type thing like that for you our audience so stay tuned for that you're gonna you're gonna love it we got a lot I mean, of things we might we're gonna do it get weird with it uh you know uh we i was discussing uh, i think it'd be funny to have paul just go into the highlands and uh do some man on the street for us yeah uh, paul would be great at that paul is <laughs> such an asshole but he's our asshole he's a wonderful asshole he's the kind of guy that will just walk right up to you and tell you what an ugly piece of shit you are and, but then somehow when it's over with, you feel good about it. You want to hug him. <laughs> Maybe grab him by the dick. He's got a great dick. He does. He's got a big old, he's got a big old hog. He's not here so I can talk about it. Uh, Paul does martial arts. I do martial arts. We were, we were sparring one day. We were going back and forth, just exchanging some, some light punches or whatever. And, uh, he's very tall. Paul's like six, five, six, six. I mean, I am relatively short. I'm five foot seven and a half. And I know that, fuck you, because I measured myself the other day. I did. We got the tape measure out. That's not all we measured. But I know I'm five foot seven and a half. I digress. Paul was going for like a high, straight sort of punch, and I went underneath and I caught him on on the hog. Like I got and it just it blocked into my hand like a giant sausage. Just and it was it was weighty. You ever pick up a roll of sausage at the grocery store, like Jimmy Dean? You're just like, God damn, that's a, that's a lot of sausage. I did that. I didn't mean to, but I was, I was so enamored by the girth of the, it was like holding two Pepsi cans. And, and, and I'm standing here and I couldn't let it go. I, I, I just, I'm holding his dick and I looked up and he looks down at me and he's like, yeah, that's right. That's what, that's what I live with. That's what I'm carrying around every day, motherfucker. Good for that guy. Good for anybody with a giant dick. What a way to go through life. <laughs> Speaking of You're which, me. if your dick doesn't work, go to bluechew.com and sign up today, and they will get your penis straightened out. And when I mean straightened, I do mean straightened. Nice and hard. Unless it's got a curve to it, you know, the natural kind. You know, I, I read that that's a, uh, it's a real medical condition when your dick does the side, sideways thing. It isn't, it's not always sideways. Usually it's up or... I guess some of them go down. That would Have be weird, right? Have you ever looked right? up porn to see if somebody could, like, fuck somebody else around a corner? That, 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 that interest. Matter of fact, I mean, hold on. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> I feel there's, like there's, that's something's probably... Gotta exist. There's got to be a guy somewhere who's gone just straight up, you know, makes a hard right, and, and he, can, he can hit it from, like, you know, behind a corner. That's great. What an interesting... What an interesting thing to have as a human. Dan and I did a commercial for our product. I said we were going to, I said aimlessly. Now, it's not aimless. You're watching. You're paying attention. Shamelessly self-promote our own shit. Uh, meet the Carvers. Kings of Horror. The coolest fucking horror network on YouTube. If you're not subscribed, you need to go subscribe right now. Check it out. And uh, our and our little show that we're going we're gonna to advertise for you right now. Do you love scary movies? Yeah. What about cartoons? I'm so glad you could join us. How about a hilarious cartoon about a family of monsters living in New Jersey who like to eat shitty people? What are you talking about? You're gonna love Meet the Carvers. Now let's get this party started! From the borderline sociopaths at Cinema Dojo Studios comes an animated series unlike anything you've ever seen. It's got witches, vampires, murderous slashers, ghoulish demonic children, and narcissistic wooden puppets with a drinking problem. Jesus, already with the bitchin'. I just woke up. Go to the Kings of Horror YouTube page right now and watch the entire first season for free. <gasps> Seriously? Tell us how much you love it and demand that someone give us some goddamn money for season two. Seriously, we need the money. Meet the Carvers. It's the funniest animated horror series of all time. And it's exclusively on Kings of Horror. And we're back. See? It's a beautiful thing. 
I I love uh, I love this Riverside at Ben thing. This is a this is amazing. This is revolutionary for podcasting. Oh, uh, Dan and I watched a movie together Friday night in honor of Fourth uh, of July, which this will be coming out just prior to. So this is a bit of a Fourth of a Fourth of July episode. We watched Civil War. I mean, it's probably Not better than film. Born on the Fourth uh, of July. I mean, could it? Could it? You could almost consider it a horror film in certain in certain ways. Uh, I mean, it's probably horror adjacent. It's fucking dark, man. Yeah, first of all, I'll say it wasn't. And I don't want to give spo- spoilers. Direct spoiler. It was not what I thought it was going to be. It was. Um, it was very dark. Now, had, had had you watched a trailer? Yeah, I saw a trailer. But I, 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 see, I, I watched one. I don't feel like the trailer really sold. What well, I don't like. really remember what the trailer was like at this point. I would have to go back and watch it again. Yeah, yeah. But I too, I too was not. I didn't really have uh, any sort of. You know, you know what I didn't like about. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. I would say two and a half severed dicks out of five. That being said, the one thing that I really did like, because what I was afraid was going to happen is it was going to get written real weird and political, which I hate. I don't like They're, politics. Well, it's funny it, in a it, movie it, like this. It didn't do that. It didn't do that. Yeah, they, they did a good job of... Very uh, middle of the road, man. Very middle of the road, which I well, appreciate. Because, because they changed up the natural dynamic. I mean... There's definitely things that you could be like, oh, yeah, those people, and oh, that's those people. But Oh, yeah, you could assign it's not, to the different groups for sure. But they definitely but, changed it up enough that I think anybody, you know, uh, no matter political bias, could watch the film and get something out of it. Yeah, it's, it's not a political movie. Um, it's a fucking terrifying movie because uh, just of how fucking crazy our world is right now. And it honestly probably could happen. I hope not, but it's um, so. In, in that respect, it is kind of a horror film, and it is very violent. I mean, there's some there's some fucking dark shit in it. But war is dark. War is violent, and uh, it's definitely not a feel good movie. It's not a you know gather the kids around and pop popcorn, and you know it's not a Disney film by any stretch of the fucking imagination. That being said, I would recommend it. What say you? I would recommend it. Uh, I'm, I'd probably say three severed dicks. Uh, All right, I'll, I'll, go, I'll, I'll go with you. We'll say three. For, for, for me, usually, so out of three out of five, anyway. <laughs> three out of five, it's like two and a half was, you know, it was passing. Three yeah. for me is like it was passing and then a little bit of some. You know, it's like sometimes three can be a great movie. It just isn't necessarily always well, your thing right right or or even necessarily well produced I, I we watch a lot of movies that have very low production value but are still very good just because of the writing and the acting right so right um all right yeah three seven dicks out of five three dicks out of five not a bad flick check it out uh it's worth a watch i don't know that i'd pay 20 bucks for it that's what it's going for right now on amazon you, you, you might wait till the, i don't know that it's a 20 dollar movie dan I don't know that I would say it's a twenty dollar film. It's it's uh it's, it's certainly a, not a twenty dollar film by yourself. No, 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 no. I mean if yeah, if you get a bite, it'll go it'll go in half, ten bucks. It's then it's like you went to the theater kind of. Order a pizza, you know, uh <laughs> sit around, blow each other, polish your AK forty seven. Polish your AK <laughs> You'll listen to Ted Nugent albums. <laughs> no, we're not going down that fucking road. Mm. Jesus Christ, the world's full of crazy people. Crazy. It's okay. Man, I, I'm a little crazy myself, and I know that. But man, I think that I think that's what makes our product so unique. Is that you and I are a bit unstable. Yeah, there's definitely something going on here. Uh, well, somebody else that we know did also see uh, the movie Civil War. And we've asked him to come on the show this evening and review it for you fine people. None other than Jack Carver from the show. Meet the Carvers, your favorite new horror TV show. Should be anyway. Jack, take it away, you little puppet bastard. Uh, 
Okay, so in honor of the 4th of July, we have decided to review the CIA PSYOP movie known as Civil War. I, I gotta be honest, I wasn't very excited about this film, but then I watched it, and if I have to summarize it, I would say it's sort of like if a Trump supporter and a Biden supporter went into the bathroom at a Bucky's to bang one out because they had put aside their differences, but... But then they got got into a fight uh, over a bag of beaver nuggets and stabbed each other to death in the stall. Didn't make me feel very patriotic. I'd say two seven dicks out of five. Hey, uh, who are the fastest readers in the world? 9-11 victims. They can go through 110 stories in a few seconds. It was Was that too soon? Hey, well, what's the difference between 9-11 and, and a cow? You can't milk a fucking cow for 23 years. Anyway, that's all I got. And we're back. I really enjoy doing those. They're short, they're sweet, they're to the point. And Jack's funny. Jack's funny because we make him funny, but he's, he's, he's a funny little guy. Funny little guy. Don't you think? Oh, uh, yeah, of so. course. <laughs> of course I think he's of funny I gotta he's funny. put up with his shit all the time madmandybeardco.com literally and I'm, I'm not just saying this uh, because they're paying me anything I, I'm a fan I'm a huge fan I've used her products for, for years now actually local here to the state of Kentucky the best beard oil I've ever used she has a ton of other products on the website go check it out madmandybeardco.com dot com if you're a man or someone who identifies as a man or you have beautiful luxurious facial hair that's all you need is a little facial hair you don't have to have you don't have to be a man to have facial hair just be sexy and grow one of these bad motherfuckers but here's the thing they get dry they get itchy they get especially in, in the summer months dan you know it's hot it's hot it's fucking hot as shit outside you walk outside your balls just stick right to your asshole it's terrible terrible out there you got to hydrate. Sounds like a particular problem. It is. You got to hydrate this shit. Otherwise, it gets, you know, it just gets like like hair on your head, right? It gets oily or it gets real, real dry and, and cracks. And, that, you know, you get, you, people get split ends in their beard. People have beard dandruff. That's crazy, right? All you need is a good handful of Mad Mandy's delicious beard oil. I love the tobacco myself because... I just like the smell of tobacco. And you just rub that shit in there and get it down on the follicles. You're good to go all day. Fuck, you don't even need cologne. You just wear that shit. You walk by, you're like, God damn, what is that? Men and women both, they want to nuzzle your face. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful thing. MadMandyBeardCo.com. All right, so Dan and I decided that we were going to discuss something that's very near and dear to my heart. Because we grew up in the 80s, and in the 80s, people did not have access to pornography the way that, that children, I say children because kids all have pawns, do now. I mean, when, when we were eight or nine years old, like, what what, what were we uh, what were we whacking into, Dan? Uh, well, you had your National Geographics. Those were on the real low end. Uh, if you were lucky, your mother had a subscription to Fredericks of Hollywood. Get a little bit of lingerie oh, yeah. adage to at, it. At, uh, be at best. Uh, there was always scrambled porn, you know. Oh, yeah, where the TV uh, was all fuzzy. If you were lucky, if you waited long enough, you would be like, oh, oh, there's a nipple. I see a nipple. You get, you get like one flash of a boob for one second. And then you, there's... You had to time the jerking so that you blammed... You know, because a lot of times there was a pattern to it. It was like fuzzy, fuzzy, clean, fuzzy, 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 fuzzy. Nipple, there's a nipple. Ow. It was hard. We, we grew up in hard times. And then if you were fortunate slash unfortunate enough to have dejected uncle, you know, who just had mags laying around. Yeah, that was yeah, the you wanted to. If you could get a hold of, a, of your uncle or your, your older brother to jerk mag, or they'd had like a, a hustler. The hustlers were the best because those, they showed bundled, right? Playboy was always just, it was a little bush. You had to use well, and then you got, you get into the weird ones, you like, like game and cherry and. Then, uh, what, were, some... those, were those out in the 80s? I think mean, that was more of a 90s thing. No, they had 80s ones. Jerking off in the 80s was difficult for a child like us. Uh, the material, the source material wasn't there. Kids now don't, they don't understand, man. Like it was, 
it was very difficult. Like now every kid on earth has a fucking iPhone. They're, they're three clicks away. You know, I, somebody told me, what was it? You're, you're only, was it two, two searches away on the internet from a dick? Like it, you're just, there's dicks all over the internet. You're, you're, you're like, click, oh, fuck, there's a penis. You know, um, it's, it's just, it's too easy. It's too accessible. Being horror fans, I don't know about you, but I was always real excited because in most horror movies, you got to see some boobies. <laughs> right? Uh, I mean, I mean Linnea yeah, Quigley, that's, baby, that's part of the three Dancing Bs. on top of that fucking tomb, butt-ass naked. I tell you what, we lost a lot of loves to that. Her Technically, story. she had a prosthetic. She had a prosthetic on down below. Are you serious? I didn't know that. Yeah. How did I not know that? She was wearing a merkin? Well, it wasn't a merkin because it was like shaved. Like it was like there was no hair. What do you, what do you call that? So uh, that, that that thing that I guess it was kind of to the degree of like in dogma when uh, looks like the, looks like an uncooked turkey breast. Just mash it over your badge. What the fuck's going on with that, man? <laughs> I mean, I guess they knew that they couldn't get away with showing badge. So, huh? Interesting. Okay, didn't know that. Well, so here's the point. This is what brings me to this. Those scenes really stuck with us as children because we were not nearly as desensitized to sex as people are now, as kids are now. So, I wanted to talk about you know, your, your, your favorite scenes, sex scenes from a horror film. What, what do you got? I'm interested. Well, first of all, I went different with this than, uh, I wasn't filling your theme specifically. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. you said sex scenes in movies. So I just thought about really interesting sex scenes in movies. Okay. So, uh, I, I got three here. Do you want to go back and forth or, uh, no, no, I want I want I want to hear yours. This interests me. All right, so uh, first of all, I had to go with Reanimator for oh, the yeah. severed, for sure, the severed head, severed head giving head scene. Uh, yeah. So here's what I'm thinking. Uh, you know, it's 2024. I say we do it again. Uh, we we do the remake, but in this version, it's a severed head that sucks a dick. And so the tip of the dick is coming out the back of the throat hole. It's coming out the neck hole? That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, the, and maybe the head's like, hey, you want to hit it from behind? Oh, so he my turns goodness. it around and he fucks That's his so room. wild. And mm. so that it's coming out the mouth? It's right. Yeah. Mash my neck together. Make a pocket pussy. See, why are we just giving away our Meet the Carvers ideas? Yeah, this is how we come up with ideas for sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, uh, love I, lo I love the idea of, of that. That's, uh, didn't somebody kind of uh, do that? You know, it was going down on Barbara Crampton, who uh, honestly is still quite the looker today. Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. So, sure. yeah, I mean, you could you could be in a worse situation didn't, than uh, didn't being the movie, a... There was a movie, was it High Intensity? Uh, what, some, high some, Anxiety? I don't know, where a guy fucks a severed head. Wasn't quite like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you well, there's a twist to that movie as well. But yeah, there is a scene near the beginning, I believe, where that happens. Yeah, yeah, where he like books the head and then he throws it out of the truck, right? And that would happen, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, uh, moving on from that, uh, Troll Two, right? Troll Two's been okay. labeled best worst movie. All right. Uh, I particularly always find it hilarious. Uh, in the movie, it's uh, Deborah Reed. Rest in peace, Deborah Reed. She uh, passed away a couple years ago. Yeah. Uh, she she played the Goblin Queen, Credence Leonore Gilgood. Fucking wild shit. Anyway, yeah. oh, she, this guy's in an RV, and he's watching this weird monkey movie. Uh, and at some point, the TV... It switches to like right outside the RV, and we see uh, Credence walking up, brandishing a ear of corn, and kind of like dancing. So she's right outside, but she's on the TV. Yeah, uh, yeah. and she's she's looking kind of like a cross between Elvira and Stevie Nicks, you know, only like with a cob of corn. Huge Elvira, and, uh, right, by the way. Huge Elvira. Right before she goes into the RV, she she tucks the uh, ear of corn 
into her garter belt, right? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, he she goes inside, and the dude's like, "Am I dreaming?" That kind of shit. Uh, and so they start making out, but weirdly, she places the ear of corn between the two of their mouths. And they both start yeah, eating the I, corn. I, I remember that, yes. But he says something about he likes popcorn. And it, then the, the corn just starts exploding into popcorn for no reason. I remember. Yeah. No, but, you know, that's good. the that's the beauty of Troll 2. I want to uh, watch that movie again. We haven't watched it. We actually, we actually interviewed George, George Hardy on uh, The Sam and Dan Nation. We did indeed. He was, he was I think actually he was working out. Yeah, the whole time. The whole time. Wor- worst audio quality. <laughs> I got one. I got one for you that I, I literally just thought of that I, I used to love as a child because it's it's basically all fucking. Do you remember Life Force? It was a, it was a yeah. it was an alien? Yeah, about alien the vampire. alien vampire chick that no. just is like nude no, for no. like yeah, most the of the movie. The whole movie is just nothing. Man, that was great as a kid. Uh, she was, was that fucking that was t- hot too. I don't remember. I don't even remember who she was. I remember Patrick Stewart being in it. Fucking Patrick Stewart was in that. That was actually Toby Hooper, wasn't it? I don't remember. Was it? It's a cult. It's cult as fuck. It's a great movie. I don't, but yeah, I don't remember exactly what it was. <laughs> uh, rem- oh, going off of yeah, he has, uh, 1985. Okay. Uh. Going off of that one, uh, I know another one that we both really love, uh, and uh, once again, not from our own sexual pleasure, but I just like fucked up sex scenes. Uh, I mean, who man doesn't? in man in dog or whatever costume in Shining that's blowing the guy. Oh yeah, that's great. That's fucking <laughs> great. Th- that whole movie. I mean, we could do an entire series of podcasts on all the fucked up shit that's in that but yeah that's that's uh that that's like it's one of those first thing that actually explored the whole furry uh yeah it's one of those things that just stands out never on well of course it stands out it's a dude blowing another dude in a fucking dog well i mean you never see him blowing him but on top of that or sure well i mean i yes i'm sure but also, there was no hole in the mouth. There was no hole in the mouth, so you gotta ruin the illusion. You gotta lift the mask up, you know. I mean, get after it. Yeah, no, that that was that was fucked up. And then and then the old woman who we thought was a young hot woman, and then she turns out to just be this decrepit fucking zombie <laughs> with like holes all over her face and. Yeah, yeah, she's just, pretty. Yeah, no, that's a that's a good one. That's, that's good another one. uncomfortable sex scene in that movie. Yes, it's very, it's very uncomfortable. We didn't get to sex. I do it like would have been way weirder. I will say I do like the idea of furry though. I mean, I've never done it. Not my thing. I don't like costumes, but I would <laughs> lo- I would literally pay to watch two of those people fuck. <laughs> For sure, in costume though. I'm, I'm sure costume. that could be arranged. Well, nowadays with the internet, of course, but there's probably an app for that. Do you want to watch furriesfucking dot com? Um, then you know, two guys show up at your house dressed like rabbits, and they bang one out on your couch. Cool, I would totally watch that. I just think I I think it's interesting. It's a very it's an interesting part of sex culture. I mean, I don't know that it's always been a thing, but I mean, maybe it has. People have always liked to dress up like shit, get fucked, right? Uh Especially in the eighties, like the men were really into like costumes then, right? For women, I mean, somebody women, came up the with maid costume, the costume, the police officer, uh, whatever, uh, something horror related. I'm, I'm quite confident. I'm sure a lot of men had an Elvira fetish in the eighties. I still have a bit. Of fire. Somebody came up with the rack and the Iron Maiden and all that shit. So oh, yeah. clearly, there was some weird shit, you know, even oh, yeah. in the way back. True. Species. I mean, I'm sure that we didn't uh, recently invent sucking dick from the back. You know, I'm just saying. That's got to be the best move, right? Eat it from behind. I mean, you know, most men. What was it? Tom Segura was talking about that. I think it was where he was like, a girl can say to a guy, "Eat it from behind," and that's the hottest thing on earth, right? We're like, yeah. But if a guy says he did from behind, the girl's like, what the fuck did you say? Nobody wants to suck dick from the back. 
It's going to be a beautiful thing. All resting on the bridge of your nose. People are getting Jesus a lot Christ. of 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 us in this. That's like what I said, though. Like the, these are the conversations that writers have. Okay, this is real. If you don't like it, then fucking shut it up. But like human beings having good dialogue. This is how projects are created. Species was the other one I was going to say. Natasha Henstridge just yeah yeah fucked half to death in that movie. That was fantastic. Great film. Species was. That was weird that that felt like it should have been like a low budget Roger Corman movie and yet it was like huge it was in theaters uh it was Mike Michael Madsen was in the first one yeah or was he in two Yeah no he was in the first one yeah he was great it was, was he in both I don't remember I don't remember I don't much think about he was, the second I don't, one I don't know that he was in two he was in one he played he played like a government agent hitman sort of thing it was it was great I I would re I would revisit those maybe we should watch those again yeah I yeah, that's him. right. He is definitely in part two. What was so, the, what was the movie uh, that came out around the same time? It was an alien flick. It was about like a, an alien that was eating people in the fucking subway. What the fuck was that about? I think it had Charles S. Dyke in that. Uh, oh, uh, mimic, mimic. Yes. Was that right about Charles S. Yeah. being in it? Okay. I think when you said Charles S. Dutton, like, who remember? I love Charles S. Dutton. He's fucking, fucking great, phenomenal. Yeah. The guy does not get near enough work. Honestly. Was that Mira Sorvino? Mm. Yes, and she was. She had just she was popular because of the. Well, she'd done a lot of shit, but I think just prior to that, she had been in what uh, Replacement Killers. A yeah, yeah, yeah. John Woo movie. Great fucking people film. don't. People who didn't uh, grow up in the 90s don't remember how uh, big uh, action flicks were. Fucking Wu film, like, man. Yeah. 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 We, we, we got to watch. We got to watch some more of that shit and do some reviews on them. Because, well, I got for we're, sure. We're primarily horror, but we, we love everything. Well, I love a good. Uh, we we love 80s and 90s action flicks 100%. as well. I mean, ninja flicks. Love a good ninja movie. For sure. Honestly, a lot All the of the sort of Shokasugi. Shokasugi, yeah, Shokasugi. Defined, uh, defined us, you know, as children. Like, in the 80s, everybody wanted to be a fucking ninja, man. Interstitial motherfuckers! Check out Rob Martinez, our official Cinema Dojo correspondent, hanging out in the great, sunny, beautiful fucking state of Texas. As he shows you his amazing, bloody, disgusting horror haul. Take it away, Rob. At another Walmart today, checking out their horror section. And as you can see, they've got the new Terrifier figure from Trick or Treat Studios. You get him wet and he turns blood splatter. Comes with a little trash bag with all his little accessories. Pretty cool. And you know I had to get the Toxy Toxic Crusaders figure. Sid Haig here in the House of a Thousand Corpses. Another Trick or Treat Studios release, all of these. It. We got some movie midnights. Collect them all. Little figures. Also picked up the Jeepers Creepers truck, uh, Bluetooth speaker. Be eating you. We got this Silence of the Lambs Hannibal Lecter figure. Yeah, I know it's a re release, but they gave it a way better head sculpt this time. And you got some bonus heads, which were really cool. Same static figure body, but at least it's still with the diorama, you know? They could have left that out. All right, what everybody's waiting to see is a Terrifier 2 VHS cassette tape. Yes, it's actually real VHS movies. It's got the uh, complete movie on two VHSs. The introduction by writer and director Damien Leone. Terrifier 2 convention phenomenon featurette. Art Crispy scratch and sniff sticker. And a Screenbox 30 day free trial. 
a bit. We got the black flow plushie. We got Leatherface, pretty woman mask. These are kind of cool. I'll pick these up. All right, so I also picked up this Megan Creeper sleeper plushie, and it comes with a little Megan retro poster and a perpetual pet. If you've seen the movie, then you know what I'm talking about. Let's see. Got the Freddy Krueger LED lamp. Some killer clouds. Good guy, little plush. It's kind of cool. He comes in the good guy toys box. Yeah, bloody disgusting Chucky T-shirt. Halloween 2 T-shirt. It's kind of cool. It's really soft. It's got a nice little blend there. Four. These awesome Ben Cooper style figures from NECA. Uh, really cool. This one's Dracula. These two that I'm showing you are Walmart exclusives. Only eight more to collect. <laughs> this one's the witch. And the box. Really cool. And we got a ghost face plush. Sam's plushie. It's freaky meals. Look like a happy meal. Got some items inside. Little it figure, or could be an it figure. Oh, there's Annabelle. It's kind of cool. The nun. Oh, check it out. I'm definitely picking up this. Really cool. Uh, Fright Rex brought these out, by the way. Here is the Terrifier Arctic Clown. And lastly, we got the bloody disgusting, another t-shirt, okay? Well, here's a closer look at the uh, bloody disgusting uh, How to Survive a Horror Movie t-shirt. And uh, anybody interested in turtles for some reason, it's over here, I guess because it's the Wolfman and Hunchback. Season two of Meet the Carvers. That's what we're currently working on. Uh, we are in the pre-production phase of that, so we're we're going to we're going to do season two. We need help. We need we need you viewers to go check it out, watch it, tell us what you like, tell us what you hate. If there's something you don't like. If there's things you, that you think we can improve on, Dan and I, I feel like we take constructive, not even constructive. We take destructive criticism. Well, <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> Uh, I mean, we might not change the thing you don't like, no. but we'll we'll take it into consideration. We'll we'll think about it. We'll think about the uh, effect that someone didn't like something. We're trying to finance season two. Oh, so, um, and we haven't decided entirely how we're gonna go about that. I mean, we 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 have some funding for that secured, but making a cartoon isn't cheap. So we need all the help that we can get. More than anything, we need word of mouth. We need you as viewers. To share it with your friends, share it with people that you love, share it with people that have the same fucked up sense of humor as you. And Hassle one of the uh, many horror news websites. Tell them how much you love it. Ask them why they haven't done an article. Asshole, yeah, <laughs> fucking asshole kings of horror. Tell them how much you love the fucking show. You can't wait to see season two because we're, we're going to do it. The, Meet the Carvers deserves a second season. It deserves a third season. It deserves all the seasons. It's a good show and it's a good idea. And uh, it's a passion thing for Dan and I. I don't care if it ever makes us rich. I just enjoy the idea of doing something creative and putting it out into the world and people enjoying it. So, And it's been a lot of fun. And going back to something we've said before, this is a very natural project. Uh, it's something that we had the idea because, yeah, because we, we wanted to see this show. It yeah, didn't exist. No. And so now, now, now it does. does. Now it does exist. And and um, we want you to love it, and we want to do we want to do things that our viewers want to see. So, 
If you have ideas, yeah, I mean, it's it's not just our show. It's, it's your, your show, show, too. man. You know? If there's something that you like, drop, drop a fucking comment. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you like. Uh, you know, and, and if we use your idea, we'll fuck, fuck, we'll give you credit for it. Seriously. Well, 100%. If we, if we use an idea that you have that we love, you know, we love our fans. And, and the, I mean, you're not going to get paid. No, fuck no. We're, let's be honest. We're not getting paid. Let's be honest. We're not getting paid yet. We're not getting paid. But, uh... <laughs> we will give you all of that fucking street cred, though. And we know how important that is. So, um, go to Kings of Horror, check out the fucking show. Meet the Carvers on YouTube. The entire season is up for free. For free. You don't have to pay a dollar. Just go watch it. And then tell us how much you love it. And then share it. That that may be the more important thing. Hit the fucking share button. If you're, if you're watching, by the way, drink. Share it. Share the fucking show. And let's get the word out there. Let's do something amazing. Let's do something beautiful together as a family. As a horror family. Because that's what we are. God damn it. You do something, I'll help you. You go make a fucking show. I'll share your show to people that I like. I want you to do it for us because it's cool. It's a good. It's 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 it's, a, it's something that that I truly love, and I think that we are doing something. Uh, we're putting something cool out into the world, man. And not everybody gets to do that. And literally, just by you watching it and sharing it, you're you're helping facilitate that process. Season two. Meet the Carver, coming to Kings of Horror television. Uh, I can't say enough good things about Kings of Horror. They, this is our home. They are, they're great people. They've been amazing to us, and they have given us a platform for our crazy bullshit and for our show. And uh, and that means a lot. Um, and just like the, uh, the Carver follow, show. Follow everything they do. There's a lot of great movies, man, that, that they put out on KOH that you're not going to see anywhere else. So, uh, just like the Carver show itself, uh, we'll get better with these podcasts as we go. This, this is the, the first, first one. one. This is the pilot. But if you, if you've stayed to the end and you listened to all this, God bless you. Uh, you're, <laughs> you're a real fucking fan and we love you and we appreciate it. Yeah. They're going to get way more interesting. This was already interesting. We're already doing better than a lot of people who do podcasts. Contests don't have animation. They, they, they don't have, you know, pictures of big, beautiful butt cheeks bouncing around and, and, and all of this wonderful dialogue. It's usually just two guys that are very boring that are talking about some long-lost fucking episode of Star Trek that no one's given a shit about for 30 fucking years. Dan and I are relevant, goddammit. This is new. This is now. We are the future. Or something. Uh, <laughs> check us out on social media. Follow us on Facebook. Meets Carvers, obviously. Instagram, meet the Carvers. Follow uh, Felissa Rose if you're not following her. Get on Instagram. She posts some of the the coolest shit. Dave shared it. Uh, you can find all of them. Find us on uh, Twitter, formerly Twitter X now. And we also have our own YouTube page. That there is some other assorted, you know, little trinkets that you might not find just on the Koh page. So, but if you're not subscribed to Koh, subscribe to their shit for sure. Follow them and uh, and share everything with your friends, man. Share, share, share. That's the biggest way you can help. If you believe in this project or any other project, is just just move it around. This is the information age, and weirdly, it's hard to get shit in front of people. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> we want to thank all of our fans. I unfortunately am out of wine, so that means that this show is coming to a close. Dan, I love you, brother. You're a good dude, and I'm very happy that we have this this child together. This living, breathing thing called Meet the Carvers. It's gonna Bounce. it's gonna go somewhere, man. Bouncing homicidal chaotic <laughs> baby. Both fucking crazy. Yeah. We're both crazy and it Yeah, I, I don't know. If a psychiatrist watched it, they would probably fucking put us both in a in a street jacket because that's funny, we both grabbed our notes at the same time. It says a lot about us, maybe psychologically, I don't know. But it's a beautiful thing. And I, I'm I'm very proud of it. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of us. And we're just gonna keep we're just gonna keep doing the fucking thing, man. As Matthew McConaughey said, just gotta keep on living. All right, all right, all right. You gotta follow them green lights. <laughs> and you gotta follow our social media. So we're gonna do we're gonna try to do two of these a month. Um, stay tuned for the next one. Follow our shit. Stay in touch. You can talk to us. We're very responsive. We are we are way way on the bottom of the fame totem pole. So, so if you 
and it's not like you're going to message us and we're not going to fucking see it. We don't have a team of people that are like answering shit. No, no, no. No, we see our shit. So if you message us, if you got a question, we'll fucking answer you. Won't we, Dan? Yeah, for sure. So reach out. We love our, our, our fans and we love fan interaction. So uh, I guess that's it. Anything else you want to add before we close this motherfucker down? I think I'm good. I'm going to go go eat some salmon patties. What's, what's the little you can do? Ties into the yeah, sex. Oh, okay. Well, I, no, I, but I really am. I really, really am. Are gonna go eat okay. Well, yeah. All right. Enjoy those. And uh, that's a wrap.